contain this. I think it will be contained. Mm. Uh, I don't think we're going to reach the Nigerian numbers. Um, it will be contained, and uh, we hope so. It will be contained? Yes. Or you're hoping it will be contained? Well, it will be contained. Oh, so you know it will well, be contained? Well, probably, let me, let, me, let me correct that. I hope, mm -hmm. we hope that it will be contained. I don't think we have reached the crisis stage yet. I think they should be able to contain it. Maybe they should have read alerts two weeks or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, that in itself is an, is an indication of what to expect, isn't it? Yes, you don't seem to be very confident about this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm only asking questions. Yes. Uh, because you see, it, it's very important. Um, uh, the last few years when Ebola was around the West African, uh, was, was within a West African sub-region, we're all concerned about it. Yes. We spoke about it because we didn't want it uh, you know, in the country, come to think about it. Uh, you know, Professor we should also uh, be very mm. careful to equate this to Ebola. Eh? Uh, no, Ebola, uh, Ebola is uh, quite a, a very, very mm. serious one, very infectious, and uh, the, 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 the way it's transmitted is quite very, very, very serious. I don't know much about this Lassa fever. Yes, I want to believe that it's a serious one, but I really think that uh, we're not there yet. There's one death, unfortunately, but I think the Minister of Health do have the necessary information to, to, to try as much as possible to educate us and to be able to contain this. Let well, say let, let's give it some couple of weeks <laughs> and see whether we come back and talk about it again. Well, we'll give it a couple of weeks. Yes. It's only a, a hope that uh, you know we do not come back and talk about another death. Uh, I'm, I'm very particular about that. Uh, the African in me says that people should grow before they die. Very <laughs> old, you, you know. But uh, let me also introduce uh, Mr. John Poku, who is head of uh, Conflict Management Program at the Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research uh, at the Kofi Annan International uh, Peacekeeping Training Center. Uh, Mr. Poku, thank you very much for joining. Us. Thank you. And, and I believe you've been monitoring the discussion. Let me say that we're also live on 3FM 92.7. Uh, let's just, just talk briefly about last If I believe you've, you know, been monitoring the from the period of the red alert, uh, high alert, uh, you know, up until the stage when we're told that one person has died out of it, and the measures that have been put in place by the Ghana Health Service to ensure it's able to uh, deal with last fever. What do you make of, uh, you know, the measures that have been put in place, for instance? Well, I would rather let the uh experts in health talk about it because uh, this is an, a kind of health disaster that could potentially break and so you allow the frontline people who have the knowledge and expertise to respond to it and uh, hearing him I'm, I'm a, a yeah, bit I'm not, ashamed I'm not an expert. <laughs> but let, let me add that <laughs> in relation to that especially when the Ebola strike yes the, I remember the UNDP assisted the government to develop a framework that enabled all the actors to kind of harmonize their actions. I think it didn't uh, occur in Ghana, yeah. but this is a similar kind of situation, and I believe we've not once again put that report on the shelf. I think this is the time to also bring it on board so that any agency, be it security or health, that is supposed to play a role will be, will be located within a structured framework. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm so we should just leave it at that. Well, talking about um, uh, expertise, I'm sure once we get into issues of uh, security, then uh, it's important I start with you because you are coming from uh, that center. I mean, being head of a conflict management program. So over the past week, hmm. we've had daylight robberies. We've, I mean, we saw one at uh, Royal Motors. Uh, you know, we also saw that at uh, the Tema uh, industrial area where uh, somebody was shot and these robbers made away with 200,000. Another person lost uh, 9,000. Somebody's even been, you know, attacked in Obasi and killed. These issues have, you know, generated lots of debate in the country and Ghanaians are becoming worried. In fact, they've raised issues. We've seen what the police have done in relation of it. But for you as an aspect, and today I want us to start by understanding what could be the underlining cause of all of these things. Hmm. <laughs> That's a huge question. Very important, we understand. But if you really want to go through the underlying causes, mm. then you must as well start from the social indicators. Good, go ahead. Um, and I may not be able to pay, uh, be very detailed, but at least I will, I will raise some issues that all of us can follow. I mean, issues about employment, for example, for the youth the way we are even handling the glamsi. We did a, a, a study that linked drug consumption to commercial or areas where there is 
kind of the potential to generate income, like commercial uh, centers and also mining centers. So drug use is one area. Now, with that at the back of my mind, if drug consumption, for example, are prevalent in areas where there is mining activities, it means people used to generate income from these activities to sustain drug use. Now, for a long time, we've banned that. So these are all, I mean, speculative analysis that I'm doing. So the source of income to sustain this is no longer there. We are looking up to government to restructure the sector and ensure that at least these people go back to work. Now, I'm not saying that we should give them the opportunity to continue to be on drugs. <laughs> but if one illegality was sustaining this kind of thing, and they move on to another illegality, which is also crime, none of them is better. But for the safety of society, I think, there's a better evil uh, in, in, uh, in this. So probably we need to look at unemployment as uh, among the youth as one of uh, the issues. Just, just so we have a better understanding, mm. how does unemployment contribute to this? That, that's why I, what I'm saying, that if we pick drug alone, those who are into drug addiction, mm. they use their income to sustain it. Now that income has been cut off for a while. I'm not saying that everybody who is into mining is, uh, is addicted to drugs. But where people through that have acquired that kind of habit, then if you take off what they use to get money to pursue this, their drug taste business, then there could be an alternative. They, they should find an alternative, and one of them can be this crime. Uh, we are also positioning ourselves to become the the safe haven or the, the leading light in the sub-region as far as development is concerned. And so you would find several of our neighbors also moving here. We have done that before when things were hard. And, I mean, times were hard for us. We used to migrate quite a lot to other neighboring countries to Togo, to Cote d'Ivoire, Abidjan, for example, Lagos, and all that. Now I think it's our turn to receive. <laughs> and we are not sure who is coming. And this is aided by the ECOWAS free movement uh, yeah. process. So people use that. that. That one, under normal circumstances, you are supposed to be here for 90 days and go back. But people come in and they are here. So that is another dimension. And if you are seeing Arrest that I, 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 want to, I want to understand that dimension that you talk about. Mm. So foreigners are coming into the country mm. because our country is doing well. Mm. And how does that contribute towards the increase in armed robbery, for instance? But once they are in and there is no job for them, that's also another space to export. But once again, I'm not saying the robberies that are going on are perpetrated by foreigners alone. Well, but I mean, if, if, if we but should I'm, look at... You, yeah, you but, but, ask but a fundamental yes, question I'm trying yes, but John to go through a number of... Uh, if we look at the information put out by the police service mm -hmm. of the nine persons who were ar arrested in connection with robberies on the Spintest Road, mm -hmm. the Forest Bureau robberies, mm -hmm. there are six foreigners in mm -hmm. there. So clearly, that's in an indication. Yeah, but that that's an incident. Yeah, that's so an incident. But yes, we, but, but you don't use that to generalize that no, all I, no, foreigners. You, you could involved, use yeah. that incident and not make a deduction, but induce from that incident mm -hmm. that it could happen. No, I'm not saying that. So, 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 I mean, the point that you're making that mm -hmm. I'm uh, following up on is that, and over the past uh, weeks, months, and, and I sit on radio every morning on 3FM mm -hmm. 92.7, mm -hmm. and I review newspaper stories, and in many of the incidents, I mean, robbery cases, mm -hmm. you have foreign nationals being mm -hmm. mentioned in there. That's mm -hmm. something you mm -hmm. know. I know, but what I'm saying is... So it's, not, if, so if it's, it's, it's no longer an incident. Uh, the, these are incidences that we've mm -hmm. seen happening. If you disaggregate the, mm -hmm. the nationality background of criminals, you will not get that high number of foreigners in getting involved. That's the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they are involved in one or two shouldn't lead us to blame all our problems on foreigners who are coming in. It's a factor that we should consider, mm -hmm. but we should not make it as... The, the, the overriding factor. 
as far as you There are criminals here before people came. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that will not go away. Mm -hmm. That fact must be established. But this is an emerging issue that we should also deal with as well. We cannot hide it, but we shouldn't make it look as if without them we are free. Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to you, but let me get to you know, Bobby Banson and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Poku talks about what could be the causes, and he talks about unemployment. Is this something you believe uh, as a cause of all of this? Well, like he said, there are a lot of causes, mm. underlying factors. And uh, we will not dispute the fact that if somebody is well resourced in terms of employment, he will not wake up and take the risk of engaging himself in such criminal act when he knows that he, for one act he can lose the source of his livelihood forever. So logically, to know it's, it's, it makes sense that people who are unemployed are easily tempted to engage in these things because they need to survive. But you know, one for me, I'm not an expert. But one thing that I have noticed over a short period of time is the general populace or the police, and this may be controversial, but I think it's true, have lost their fear factor in our communities. They have lost their fear factor. Did we ever fear them? Yes. No, yes. yes. The, we, when I say fear, not that you see police and then if you are not doing anything wrong, you go and hide. No. But at least the sight of the police should automatically bring some sense of order in any gathering. Listen, we were in this country when somebody, a very popular artist, and I've said this on other platforms, stood in front of his house or in his compound, made threatening allegations against somebody else from another country that if he comes to Ghana, he will make sure that his gang deal with him. And this person fired so many warning shots. You're talking about Shatawale. Yes. Yesterday, I saw another video of him driving a car in town without a DV plate, without a normal plate. He was stopped by a police vehicle. He had the F-1 tree to walk to the officer and ask the officer, don't you know who I am? And he sat in his car and drove off. And the people around were hailing him. This is the fear factor I'm talking about. People sit on social media now mm. in certain areas that are supposed to be flashpoints and make ag accusations against people belonging to another camp. Life on social media and say that we will show you. We will do this. We will do this. And the police sits down. Nobody does anything. For me, that is where it starts from. Any person not being a government official, not being a security official, can hire a dispatch rider, a police dispatch rider, when there is traffic, and they'll be driving them through, ping, 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 and going. Those are the fundamentals. Why do you think armed robbers would have the, the courage? First day, they attacked Royal Circle in the middle of town, industrial area. The next day, they go to Tema. Just the next day. These are different people. Yes, I'm not saying they are the same mm. people. But if an action had been taken when this thing happened at Royal Bank, you think that they would not think twice before going to when Tema? You say, when you say if an action... Sorry, not Royal taken. Bank. The uh, Royal, Royal Motors. Motors. If you say when an action, if an action had been taken... And I'm coming to the point. What action are you talking okay, about? Okay, so they waited. The police waited. The first incident. The second incident. The third incident... We were told there's a national security meeting. Mm. The next day, they managed to go to where these armed robbers were, the next day, and kill them in their hideout. I heard the new regional commander talking about it. And I wonder, you, it took 24 hours only when there's a change. They didn't meet them stealing. They went to their hideout. Intelligence gathering. So, must they always be reactive? Must they wait until something like this happens? The police as a unit, I am 100% sure, if they want to find out information about people who commit robberies, they will know. Listen, observe this. When there's an armed robbery and the police is not shot, imagine how long it takes for the thieves or the robbers to be arrested, generally. If a police officer is killed, 
it takes less than 48 hours. They were announced, oh, we managed to trace the people and we've, we've killed them or we've arrested them. Why? Why must they wait until the public is scared, until we start making lots of noise before they act? When these things started, I had the IGP. He went before a very, I think it was an interna a forum organized by an international agency. The American Chamber. And said that they don't have the means. We'll get to they are under-resourced. We'll I get want to, to make a point. Yes, make the point. The IGP sits on an at an international forum and tells the whole world that the police is under-resourced. Is that not true? I'm not saying it's not true. But if you say this, listen, the armed robbers, they are not fools. They plan. <laughs> they plan their deeds, mm. their actions. So if you say that the police are under-resourced, what are you telling them? <coughs> Armed robbers can go to a police station and then free people. Domi wasn't the first time it had happened. They, it happened somewhere in Somenia or so. It wasn't armed robbers, the local people. They went to the yes. police station. They did that. When and uh, they were arrested. They, no, they were not arrested immediately. Yes, that is what I'm trying they to say. They didn't get run away. They were arrested. Yes, so they generally, we as a people, we are losing the fear factor for the police. Let me give you an incident. Years ago, I remember this because I happened to be driving around 37 when it happened. When the military were in charge of securing the 37 hospital area premises, no truck truck driver dead packed anyhow. Do you know why? Tell me. Because they arrested one of them and sent them to the mortuary. I don't know if you remember that That's incident. A, yeah, but that was an abuse no, of... Yes, I'm not saying it's wrong. Yes. I'm not saying it's right. It is wrong. But because of the fear that people have for military, they will not play the fool. Why are the police now saying that they are going to bring the military to us? They've actually system? brought them. I'll I, I get back to you on this. But, um, you know, coming to you, uh, Professor Jidonu, I mean, you've, you, you've, you've monitored situations. We've all been talking about everything that has been happening. Uh, you know, John Poku raises the issue of unemployment. And, and, and I want us to understand what you believe could be the cause of this. Because in all the conversation we've been talking about, the please, the please, the please, the please, the please. But how about those who are not employed? How about those who have lost their jobs? Is it the reason why we're seeing some of these things? Well, Winston, uh, let me start with what uh, Nunu Mensa, General Nunu Mensa, yes. the former what uh, security advisor. Advisor, yes. He said it's, a, it's about a stomach. Mm -hmm. It's a stomach factor which is causing this thing. I, I won't necessarily say so. Now, if it's a stomach factor, we have the stomach issue for a long time. You know, unemployment has been around for a while. Yeah. It's not just in January, February, suddenly we have an uh, upshoot of unemployment issues. It could be a contributing factor. You see, in all these things, we have what you call the, 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 the push factor. The push factor and the, the, the pull factor. The push factor, what, is, what are the things pushing these people onto the street to commit this, uh, this uh, uh, armed robbery? We are told that this month alone, about close to 20, okay, um, type of robberies have taken place. In, in February, there are 20, uh, you know, Forest Bureau robberies. Just for, 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 for the, that's Forest Bureau Yes, robberies. just for Forest Bureau. Very good. Yes. That might be a very organized, uh, organized yeah. group, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the push factors could be unemployment, could be hunger, could be this, could be that, could be that. There's also the pull factors, which means that since people don't go and attack people if they think that they will be caught easily okay probably they may feel that well i can get away with it you do also may feel that there's a copy cut oh those guys did it those other gangs did it we could also go and do it so those issues are all, are all out there which we need to be very careful in the way we analyze this there's also an issue of prevention the police are they supposed to prevent these things or is there what's supposed to be prevention more than a kill okay so those issues must be analyzed so for me where i'm sitting i cannot actually put my finger on and say look this uh, what uh, this uh, armed robberies are caused mainly by the push factors or by the pull factors. Now it's very interesting that the police are reacting. The reacting people might say that probably the reacting they are reacting is actually a bit too late or too small. Uh, we could have prevented all these things. Now looking at the figures, the February and the January figures, we want to compare it to what happened last year. 
I think you, I mean, you, you showed me a figure last time that one, about 180. Yes, uh, about 189. That was for, uh, from uh, January to March last year. Last year. And this, 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 this year. year January, we're talking about, uh, about 87. Very good. So we want to know what exactly is causing this. Okay. I wouldn't want to say suddenly, suddenly the unemployment situation is what is causing this. There might be some underlying factors or maybe more of the pool. One guy did it, he got away with it. Or they didn't arrest him immediately. The other gang said, look, we're well, also going to have a good uh, a go at it. It's also be because now the reportage is not in volumes. That's what we're knowing a lot about a lot of these things. So this is a multifaceted issue that we need to be very careful to put, try to put the, the, the blame or saying that this is what is causing it and this is what is not causing it. I don't really have the clear answer, but I know that there are a lot of issues that could be interplay here. Yeah, but Prof, isn't it more of a stomach factor? I mean, anybody who would want to do a thing like this is doing so because uh, he or she is hungry. Well, it's a stomach factor. You could have been repetitive. You can go and steal a mango. You could have go and steal a chicken. You can go and steal a goat. Okay? Yes, there's a lot of stomach factor out there. A lot of people who don't have a job. They can go for petty cash. That is what it is, petty crime. These are armed robbery. These are serious ones. Exactly. They may be organized. In fact, Nunu Mendes also said, okay, I think I'll take this, word, this one for him. He said, these people are well organized. This is their business. Mm -hmm. They're not just people, ordinary unemployed people who just get up today and say, I'm going to uh, Usu to go and rob people. They are organized people. That is their business. They look at the terrain, they see what is going on, and they say, can we go in? When we get, in, get you, can we get out easily? So those pull factors is very, very important. Nobody is going to commit a crime. It doesn't matter how desperate it is. If he knows that he's going to be caught straight away and jail. There is that sort of feeling that, well, we can get away with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the situation is such that, well, those guys who are going to catch us are not, are not very serious. Mm -hmm. Or they are, they are very occupied. Now, look at it. Now, January and February is very interesting. During the Christmas season, the police are very vigilant. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are very vigilant. Is it possible that the, these robbers also know the terrain? Say, hey, look, after Christmas, things go down a little bit. Okay, probably by February, let's go in. I'm not an expert, but I think that there may be something about February, January, February that may make these gangs. Easy. So I wouldn't want to say that just because of they're unemployed. They have been unemployed for a long time. Where well, suddenly they actually start going for a lot of uh, this is stealing and uh, using armed robbery. So we must be very careful. So if they are unemployed for a very long time, yes. and you're saying, why suddenly? And I would want you to answer the question. Why do you think suddenly they've gotten into this? I don't know. <laughs> that is why the police research department is supposed to figure out. That's why that we want to compare the figure last year to this year. Last year, you said what? January, February, March, about 180 something. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. And then here, January alone, we have about 80. Mm -hmm. When you multiply 80 by 3, okay, you will get about 200 and something. There may be something going on there. I don't think at this stage, probably the police will know what is going on. But I must say, the people who are committed this are just not ordinary guys who will come one morning and say, hey, Charlie, let's go and have some operation. They are organized people. According to the Nunu Mensa. They say these people are serious people. Okay? They are not just your ordinary petty, petty thief. Okay. You want to find those at the Mokala market? You want to find out that people getting here and there, stealing goat in the villages? These are guys. These are high street guys. So that is a serious aspect of it. So we must not attribute this. You might, those people who are you may give them a job tomorrow, but they still go out and do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's not their business. Mm. They know the police operation. They know how they, know how they operate. You see, these guys don't just turn up and do things. There's a pull factor there. They'll do it knowing that they can get, they can get there, do the operations, get the money, or get whatever they want to get, and run, get away with it. If they know they can be caught, that's why the CCTV issues are very, very important. In a lot of developed country now, a lot of these robberies, within minutes it's committed, they find the guys out because the CCTV is all over the place. Okay. Yes. I'll get back to you on, uh, you know, the uh, response of government. But uh, we've been joined by the Vice Chairman of the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament, uh, uh, Colin Zouzou who is also the Member of Parliament for Mentia North. Uh, Robert, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning and it's my pleasure. Great. I, I believe, you know, as our representatives, you know, you people have been finding out what could probably be the cause of all of these things. In all your dealings with the... Uh, you know, hierarchy of the, you know, the Ministry of Interior and the police service. What do they tell you is the cause of all of this? Well, thank you very much and uh, good morning to your cherished viewers. 
and uh, we had a meeting with uh, Minister for Interior and also Minister for National Security and IGP was also in attendance and as you know we are mandated as a committee to look into issues that relate to national defense and security uh, we met we had a very fruitful discussions uh, so many security matters were discussed uh, when we were in session uh, but we as a committee uh, have given them uh, two weeks ultimatum to as it were uh, submit their report and we are also monitoring the system closely to see if the trend would continue. But um, I must say that uh, security as a discipline uh, must be viewed in such a way that it wears no colors. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we as people must know how we handle such matters, especially when we are confronted with what uh, we witness now. Um, I must say that when we met, uh, police were blunt uh, that uh, they face certain logistical constraints, uh, including uh, increment in manpower. Uh, you and I know that um, the government on this part is doing, I mean, what is expected of them because uh, the president has come out boldly that these are some of the challenges we face as a country as far as security is concerned and therefore uh, he has made some pledges of voting a closer amount of 800 million Ghana CD uh, which is an equivalent of uh, 176 million US dollars to retool police service and I think it's in line with uh, article 200 clause 3 of our constitution that we need to equip uh, police as an institution uh, not only that, uh, the president went ahead that we need to deploy over 1,000 vehicles. Mind you, the current statistics depicts that uh, Ghana Police Service uh, has only um, uh, 400 vehicles. We'll, get to, we'll, we'll get to some all, all these issues, but w when you say, for instance, that uh, when we s you met with the police, they were blunt that uh, they have logistical yes, constraints. Sure. Is it a case that that is one of the reasons why we are having this? Did they say, for instance, that, well, because we have logistical constraints, we are unable to deal with this issue and hence the surge in them? No, no. Uh, well, to some extent, it could affect their operational um, moves. Uh, notwithstanding, uh, I'm of the considered view that uh, we need to review some portion of our existing laws. Uh, there are instances where uh, a criminal could shoot a police officer uh, in that the system is so liberal, uh, thinking that police are so reluctant and when it comes to even self-defense, trying to restrain themselves because of due process. Um, but the criminals have also taken undue advantage of, I mean, I mean, shooting them, killing them, which to some extent uh, we need to, we need to, I'm not suggesting, and I'm not suggesting that there, there, there should be shoot and kill, but uh, the point is that we must also look at the laws and see how possible to embold uh, police officers so that these hardened criminals would not take advantage of the system. Exactly, but for, for, for me now, my, my, my interest, and I believe a lot of our viewers and listeners would want to know, you've met the, you know, Minister, security couples, yeah. security couples. It's very important. We sent you there. You are representatives. <laughs> sure. We want to know when you met them. What did they tell you was the cause of all of these things? You know, my difficulty uh, has to do with the fact that uh, you can't sit here and talk about details of what transpired because, in doing so, then you are also arming the the, the 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 criminals to know your strategies. And you and I, I, I know, am not talking about strategies. I'm not talking about strategies yet, you know, because uh, you know, Mr. John Poku has talked about uh, the problem of uh, uh, you know unemployment. That is, I mean, that he says could be part of the problem. We want to understand because you see, we've been having a discussion on all of this, and uh, there's some who believe that we're just not hitting it right. 
we are hitting the pleas, we are hitting the pleas. We probably are not getting to the root of all of these things. And so if you have spoken to the pleas, it's important for us to also know what the problem is. Because for all you know, if it's an, uh, I mean, a case of unemployment, we could get the private sector wanting to you know, uh, increase their efforts in helping solve that problem, for instance. You are right. You are right. You see, um, there were some strategies, and uh, I think um, we are assured by the Ghana Police Service that uh, they're going to deepen uh, police patrol visibility, mm. and we are of the view that that would go a long way to make police presence being felt by the, the public. And they are also going to intensify um, 24 hour shift system whereby um, w to beef up security. Uh, other strategy has to do with, I mean, provision of uh, logistical uh, assistance. So uh, that is where, where we discussed. Talking about the issue of unemployment, and I must say uh, that uh, this is one of the biggest uh, legacies bequeathed to this current administration by the, the, the NDC government. Uh, unemployment in this country at a point in time became a national security threat. And if you look at uh, national security uh, report uh, 2016, clearly you could see that. So uh, it's a major challenge that this current administration face. But I think the, 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 the president and also the government uh, it's not relenting in its effort to ensure that um, we, we curtail the issue of unemployment by making sure that uh, we create an enabling environment so that more jobs will be there for the teeming unemployed youth. And if you look at 2018 budget statement, um, there's this program that is National Builders Corps, which uh, public sector is supposed to recruit more than 100,000 youth. Not only that, we've already uh, engaged over 3,000 young graduates through a digital marketing and entrepreneurship program. Talking about other sectors like um, agriculture, we've been able to absorb, I mean, thousands of uh, 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 people as being beneficiaries of the program. But you see, uh, when you cite all these examples, I mean, no, these are some of the yeah, I mean, some of the things, some of the yeah, measures exactly. that uh, you think your your uh, party, which is in government, is putting in place to ensure that you know um, we have uh, we solve that unemployment problem. But uh, if, if if that's it, anything to go by and. Uh, what we saw last year uh, by way of uh, crime, and we're looking at what we're seeing this year, that certainly should be leading to a reduction in crime, unfortunately. No, no, no. By the first uh, you know, month uh, figures that we have, it doesn't look like it's been reduced. Go ahead. Thank you very much. You see, there's a correlation mm -hmm. between unemployment and crime. But the point is, it's not the sole determining factor uh, in that. And research has also shown, you know, when you go to, I mean, some advanced countries, crime rate is on ascendancy. Yet, yet, talking about employment, I think they are gainfully employed. So, it has to do with um, antisocial acts. Okay. Rather me, than economic problem. Let me get to when you met the committee, when you met the security couples. Now, the things that they told you, you say, well, these are security matters. Yes. You don't want to talk about them. But were they any different from what the information minister put out? Well, I must say that details were given. Um, partly, yes, but I cannot say that what the minister of information uh, came out to put it in the public domain uh, is the whole project. No. There are some aspects that the minister did not touch on, of which I think we as a committee have given, uh, what do you call it, uh, a two weeks ultimatum for them to submit their action plan. And based on that, uh, we, we, we so, also so, state so our position. They've not shown you their action plan? Now. No, not that, not that. Mm -hmm. Suggestions were made. Of course, as a committee, we made some recommendations. 
and we are expecting them also to implement it in collaboration with what they've put on the board. So uh, you wait. We are also monitoring, <laughs> but um, I can assure well, you. I, I can I, assure I, you. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that uh, Ghana is safe, even though we are we are pushing police service to up up their games. Well, is not not <laughs> not <laughs> to <laughs> stand. <laughs> no, the, the, the best no, form of assurance is not what you say, but what I see, isn't it? You said yes, I agree. agree. No, but the best form of assurance is not to say I assure you, but for me to see. That this is what is happening. So saying for instance, yeah, listen, that, you, 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 know, you, you and I know mm -hmm. that even um, let's say government has voted uh, an amount of eight hundred million cities to be released to uh, Ministry of Interior mm -hmm. through Ghana Police Service. You know, when it comes to uh, uh, government uh, procurement process, it takes time. That's why even you have though, a single source uh, no, of pro pro procurement process. Yes, restrictive even, 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 All these I know, I know. Yeah. Even we have emergency clause in the exactly. procurement law. Yeah, so uh, we're working on it. You, you, you relax. <laughs> Rest assured. And I can assure you that we are safe. We have the capacity to deal with criminals in this country. Mm. Well, talking about the assurance that we're safe, I believe that, uh, you know, Ghanaians will be the best judges. And so uh, you can join us with your thoughts, uh, 0560 70 70. That is our WhatsApp line. Just tell us if you feel safe, you know. Uh, the Vice Chairman of the uh, Defense and Interior <laughs> Committee, Honorable Collins Ousu Amankwa, believes that, well, rest assured, there's no problem. And he says the government is doing everything possible to ensure that you're safe, except that, as usual, we've had certain procurement issues, even though there's... Uh, single sourcing and restrictive tendering. This is New Day Saturday edition with me, Winston. I will go for a short break. When we return, we continue our discussions on the state of security in the country. All right, so welcome back from that short break, and thanks for staying with us. Uh, this is New Day Saturday Edition, also live on 3FM 92.7. I'll be doing your messages shortly. Just keep them coming to us, 0500 60 70 70. But let's look at uh, the response now. And so you, you heard from you know, the uh, Minister of Information, Mustafa Hamid, outlining government's plans to uh, you know, deal with this particular issue. We've also seen some... Uh, you know, a reshuffling of uh, police ranks. I do not know whether it was, you know, planned or uh, as a result of this. But, um, Bobby, let's look at the response so far, starting off first with the police service. What do you make of the police response to all of this? Response in terms of the reshuffle. Uh, well, the not, not only the reshuffle. You, I'll you, start with that one. Okay. For me, it will not make any difference. Or it should not be intended to be the cure for this. Police is an institution, mm -hmm. not built or not governed by personalities. If you go and bring Njema A. Gabriel to Ghana to be the regional commander, and he doesn't have the means to do his job, he cannot do it. So for me, it's not about who was the regional commander. If you feel that the regional commander or the person you are moving has failed, then you should not, the person should not remain in the police service at all. Because every department of the police service is equally relevant. No, but maybe his strength is in another field. So, so why did you so bring him no, here no, in the no, first so, place? Yeah, so we've realized he can't perform here. He can perform somewhere else. Why don't you take him there? Anyway, we wait to see. The, 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 some people have been moved from other regions to other regions. Or to, yeah, as it were, to other regions. Does it mean that in those regions that they've been moved from, they did not record crime? Or those, the crime r rates in those regions were lower than the ones that they've been taken to. For me, it's about us concentrating on the police as an institution, not personality. I've seen campaigns on social media for certain individuals to be given certain positions. You're talking about uh, think, COP Kofi Bwaki. Yes, I think uh, that it's... If, if, uh, go ahead. I think it's, it's, it's... We are losing focus of how to address the problem. He is a human being. He will not be there forever. Mm. Are we building an institution or we are building individuals? We should focus on giving them what they need to be able to work. If the, you see, Ghana police 
And I'm saying this because I've said this on this platform before. Because my dad is a police officer. Okay. And I've lived in a lot of barracks across the country. They are very, very intelligent. If, they, if a crime is reported and they want to arrest the suspects, if they choose to, within 48 hours, they can. They have, how do they call them? Um, informants all over. People walking around who give information to police. It's just a matter of them deciding to pull the trigger when they want to. And that is why I'm saying if you observe the line of arrest and attacks, if a police officer is killed during a robbery incident, maximum 72, 48 hours, they'll go and arrest the person or report that they've killed the person. Bobby, you, see, you make this point. So if the police wants to do something, yes. they do it. They do it. So you're suggesting that in some of the instances where you've not seen them acting, it's only because they do not. Because they've only reacted. They know what to do to prevent these things. They know what to do to prevent these things. I am very confident about that because of how swiftly, all of a sudden, they've, been man they've managed to arrest people. A new commander is appointed within 24 hours. He leads a team to the hideout. The same day, they arrest a rubbish collector in Adobeloshi. I read it in the news. Who they say carries guns as if uh, he's walking around as if he's collecting rubbish. But he has guns in it. The same day, they go and arrest the, the gentleman. Where all of a sudden, where did that information come from? Couldn't they have had that information before? Must we wait until something happens? That is my problem. And that is why I come back to the point that it is the fear factor people have lost. We've, a lot of people have lost fear with the police. And they think they can do whatever they want. And the police will not do anything for whatever reason. Well, they say they are bringing um, 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 more vehicles, um, um, helicopters. I heard the Minister of Interior saying that they are going to take advantage of the sole sourcing provisions in the Procurement Act to make sure that they bring these equipment and helicopters to help them fight it. We hope so. Let, let us see that the police is in action. When Ghana police goes on peacekeeping, well, except what just happened in Sudan, we are one of the most respected police, um, I mean, the expert would say, that we've, we've won a lot of awards for our quality of service. When we go on international peacekeeping, we can do it here. Okay. We, can, we don't have to wait for these things to happen all the time before we, they react. They know what to do, and they must do it. Talking about knowing what to do and they must do it, let's uh, listen to what the Information Minister, Mustafa Hamid, said uh, when he met the press on measures being put in place to actually address uh, the security challenges in the country. Roll out a program to link all these CCTV cameras to a National Operational Command Center. The Ministry of Energy has been directed to accelerate the pace of its cities and communities lighting program in order to light up, light up our cities and communities, especially crime-prone areas. All right, so that's uh, Information Minister Mustafa Hamid. But John Poku, uh, coming back to you, you've heard him, uh, you know, who we'll procure helicopters, would uh, have CCTVs, you know, uh, you know and, uh, you know, would have street lights and all of that. But, uh, you know, if you talk about the CCTVs, all financial institutions have CCTVs, many of them have CCTVs, if not all. Right? But uh, he says they're going to link that to a national CCTV center. How does this deal with the <laughs> challenge? Interesting. I think that, that part is also important. But then this whole approach of equipment-based approach to dealing with the problem, yes, it's, it's good, but I think more needs to be done. I see this whole thing uh, with the image of an iceberg, a mountain of ice, but underneath is a huge bulk of ice also that supports what you see on the surface. Or oh, we don't even have ice here. So let's say a river, a, a tree by the bank of a river. In the afternoon, you see the image of the, of the tree in the river. The point I'm making is that the preparations towards the commission of a crime starts within the community. And if we want to deal with it, 
properly. That is where our focus should be. Now, the Racial for the announcement that we've had, is the emphasis shouldn't be on the persons who are coming to man the directorates. We should hear about a new mandate, an additional mandate, with benchmarks that they are supposed to achieve over time, that we can measure them against, uh, measure their performance against. What we've just uh, seen or heard is more about individuals being moved from one place to the other. And we've seen that before. It doesn't really communicate the kind of uh, assurance that we want. And indeed, in all this, I don't think the CID was mentioned, which no, is the I, fulcrum I, of intelligence. I didn't, I didn't see the CID. Uh, that's that's mm. what it is. And for me, these are important areas that we should look at. You wanted to see the what CID being mentioned in there? I mean, this is the part that the, the, I think the issue about research was mentioned, intelligence was mentioned, uh, by how that is linked to the investigative. But, but, but Mr. Poku, when you say the No, CID, operations relate to what they are talking about. Yes, but CID, equipment yeah, why, why, why the CID? Because that is where the investigation system is. That is the heartbeat of the whole thing. But, and that is where the the link with the community is better expressed i mean much of what is up uh, the crime that we face it's not everything that you need a weapon to go and so if you are ordering weapons and there is somebody in the community who comes in always quiet doesn't cause any problem to warrant suspicion but people Just know that this person is not working there's nothing that you can tell mm -hmm. to how do we get at this person before he goes, he leaves his community, change over in another community and go and commit that crime? I mean, those are just, just so I understand you well, when you say in all of this, you haven't heard of the CID, mm -hmm. were you expecting to hear the CID being mentioned in the changes, for instance? Not the changes, but as part of the strategy of government, mm -hmm. I want to see how they are going to use intelligence or investigation to trace these people wherever they are. There are those who say some of these things, and uh, you know, the Vice Chairman of the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament, Colin Sohuswamankwa, says, it is not everything that we come out to say in the public when it comes to intelligence gathering. So maybe... No, but you will, you will not mention that you are going to use them to do ABC, but you can summarize like they are saying, mm. to show that you are not just focusing on getting weapons from, say, Israel or Ukraine or wherever, but internally you are strengthening your investigative mechanisms to trace where these people are. But those appear a bit missing. I think we, we, rather, we are looking at a situation where there will be more weapons in the system, where we will see uniformed officers in the system. That is the image that we are pro projecting. Mm. But we are not looking at that sober investigative mechanism that says this is a bad guy living in this community and let's pick him up before Since, he... since you are a uh, head of program on a, mm -hmm. of conflict management, mm -hmm. these are things you know. You've talked about, I mean, you said, well, the CCTV, yes, but crimes are committed in the community and people would prepared know... Prepared from the community. Prepared from the community. Yeah. What, are you, I mean, what are you suggesting by that? <laughs> you but they are not from us. Mm -hmm. They live with us. So? People see them. So? And so our strategy should be one that catches them before they get out there. So our strategy is not to see them committing the crime. Yeah. But we should be has, uh, fish for them yeah. be before they come. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's preventive. So the CCTV talk and all that. I said it's important. Of course, one, these things will happen. But not the most important. Not really. That's not what I'm saying. As two legs. Mm -hmm. Combating is important, but prevention is important. And if one both are working, you will spend less on combating because it will not happen in the first place. The police say the most important thing is uh, prevention. I will not relate them in terms of which one is important. No, but the police say that. The police well, themselves. They and, say, and that's why you and I are here. They say the most important that, thing is That prevention. is why you and I are here having this discussion. You understand? Because from what they are doing, what I can project is that maybe... Within a short time, the number of police officers that we, you will see will increase. And you not just see police officers very armed with, uh, what do you call it? Oh, this, this protective uh, bulletproof. Bulletproof, bulletproof stuff uh -huh, with weapon. But I don't think that will be the end to our problems. 
What would be the end to our problems? The end to our problems is to be able to rid the communities of these guys. So in effect, the end to our problem is intelligence gathering. Yes. That's what we need to focus on. We need to focus on it. It's a sober thing. We, we cannot just display it or discuss it in public because the more you do that, the more you arm the criminals. But at least there should be a way of assuring that as part of the truth, these are central to what we are, we are trying to when you When you listen to the uh, information minister, for instance, because he's the one who's been speaking to mm -hmm. us, do you get the assurance that the measures that have been put in place would help solve the problem? Well, I can understand him that he did what he did because the, com or the, uh, the crime has been committed. People are shocked we are not used to this. And so you need to be seen to be doing something about it from that perspective. But I expected him to go a step further to talk about what is being done concretely to prevent this in the long term. And that's a, a, a certain Well, he says the police is going to conduct, and if I should quote his own words, a surgical operation. Mm -hmm. That, 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 that to, to, communicates to an idea of... Uh, intelligence gathering. To, he says, no, no, no. You know, he, he says no, a, it's it's a, a surgical operation mm. to actually get into the communities mm. to pick out criminals and suspected criminals. Oh, well, to the extent that, that that surgical operation, which I understand to mean targeted maybe searches in the communities, to the extent that that is uh, informed by intelligence, that's fine. He did, maybe he didn't say that, but uh, I'm saying to the extent that that is the premise, that's fine. But I, I want the intelligence element to lead in the strategy, the set of strategies that is being preferred. By. So there's something missing in all of yeah. this. From, from your point of view, mm -hmm. uh, listening to other things we're saying, we're missing one thing yeah. which we haven't talked and about. And remember the investigators also have their own needs. Mm -hmm. Right? And... <laughs> Those needs are not mentioned as part of the truth that they are providing to the police. What are those needs? Well, if you move from one place to the other, you need something. If there is a listening device that you want to use, you need it. They will tell you. The police will tell you. A lot they are not them. here. You know. Tell us. <laughs> I'm not a police officer. <laughs> no, but you know. I mean, since you, <laughs> but since, I've mentioned since, a few. Since, since you know, I've I mean, mentioned why, a few. Why don't you tell the us? The point I'm making mm -hmm. is, if the focus had been there. The set of equipment that they announced, all those things should be part of it. So, so, so then basically, in effect, there are a lot of more things we should be doing, and mm. not just these six, you know, pointers that we've put. I out mean, in. we've also discussed the issue of mistrust in the police. I mean, you talked about the fear factor, but why would somebody even storm a police station of all places and disappear into the community, but the community refuses to volunteer information? Mm. I mean, as part of the study that we did on small arms, mm -hmm. we did focus group discussions. And I, I remember there is one place called Kenya mm -hmm. We had a focus group discussion there. And they were telling us that sometimes they even arrest a chief, hand him over to the police. And the next moment, the guy is on the streets threatening them. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, after the discussion, one of them even told me if I had invited a police officer into that meeting, he would never have spoken. So I think that there's something missing as far as civil police relations is concerned. And that is where the kind of information they need to act. S since, you know, since you know a lot about these things, I'm interested in the missing link that you talk about. There's something missing. What is missing in there? What is missing, we should give equal emphasis to the investigative aspect of policing. We shouldn't be thinking that by providing the hard stuff, that will be the end of it. I think that is just about dealing with the crime as they occur. But dealing with the crime before they occur requires some serious investigation. Okay, but also because we talk about, uh, you know, the police will talk about, yes, we need to prevent crime, but when mm. crimes happen, mm. it is expected of us to be able to deal with the crime. We mm. combat them. I mean, mm. it's, it's happened. We, yeah. we, we deal with and it. And I think that's where the focus is now. Exactly. So then, uh, you know, the tools become very important. Mm -hmm. um, Professor Jidun, do you think, uh, and, you know, based on your monitoring of situations, that the police is well resourced to be able to combat these crimes? Now, which thing? I think uh, the more I listen to the, our discussion and also on the social media, 
it's looked to me like uh, the story of blind people, a number of blind people trying to describe an elephant. Mm. One hold uh, the leg and say, hey, it looked like a, a big baobab. The elephant must be a baobab. One hold the trunk mm. and say, oh, it looks uh, long and so, so and so. It must be a big snake. So they each hold various parts and make it, I think this is what the elephant is. But all those things are not the elephant. The elephant is an elephant. What I'm not sure whether we have got to the stage where we actually know the totality of the elephant. But what we are sure is that these things are caused by a lot of factors. And crime just didn't start in Ghana. We've got crime since day one. Maybe on a lower level, a higher level, and then it comes down, it goes up. The police have been dealing with it all these years. It's like any country. Now, to ask whether the police have the resources, the logistics to deal with these things, we'll be hearing this for all time in memorial. That the police say we don't have enough resources to tackle the crime. You remember, mm -hmm. long ago, you see, every political party try as much as possible, and eh? every government tried to resource the police. But they always come back and say, we still don't have enough. So when we continue chasing the fact that they didn't have enough to solve the crime problem, we will never get there. Just go back. The police always say we don't have enough. We all don't have enough to run this country. We make do with what we got. Okay? So I think that the issue of resources have always been there. Government over government try their best. You remember some time ago the police don't even have vehicles. They have this old Jeep. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. The Kufa government gave them a car, every air conditioned cars. Yeah. Eh? Everybody <coughs> yes, and then with the uh, what do you call it? Uh, Atamir's government also came. So every government do something because you cannot afford mm. not to resource the police mm. because they always come and say, you know, if you don't resource, we don't get. It. So the police continuously have been resourced. If resourced at a given level, will have solved this problem. Will have solved it a long time ago. So again, it's not just the leg of the elephant. It's a totality yeah, of things. Pro Professor Jidono, yes, talking about resourcing the police and. Uh, we spoke to an officer of the Ghana Police Service, and he told us the challenges they go through, for yes. instance. Uh, if you talk about, oh, if it's an issue of resource, I mean, they probably would have been able to deal with it all as well. He makes the point, for instance, that some policemen, okay, go for their guns. They go out there, and the guns don't work. Uh, you know, they, can't, they don't function. Well, it might be a question of inefficiency. Uh, hold on, hold on. You would understand. Yes. <laughs> There's a police station in Accra here which has only one functioning gun, the whole police station. Yes. I mean, you probably would argue, oh, but they need to gather intelligence. So when they are confronted, for instance, mm. and you, you, you come across robbers with guns, mm. there's only one mm. gun for the whole police station. He talks about the fact that the gun to policeman ratio is f one gun to four or five policemen. That is the situation you face. And the fact that, I mean, there was a robbery in Tamale, a bullion van. And the police man at, at the time tried firing and he couldn't fire. Mm. He was killed by the armed robbers. He tried, but his gun was not functioning. So clearly, there's a logistical challenge, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. If all those <laughs> are true, if all those are the fact. My source is a serving officer within the police. Very good. So they are true. Yes. They have these problems. The government didn't know about that. If it's that serious that the police, the gun to police ratio is so low, we need to be very careful about these things. Okay? It came to that basic level. We don't know about that. The government is not addressing it. Is it this crime situation that we have now? Suddenly we found out that those problems exist. I see those problems, whatever they are, exist a long time ago. We know those issues. And some government of a government try to probably they address it enough. But what I'm saying is that we need to be very careful, thinking that once we fix this, all our problems will be fixed. It's part of the unemployment problem. I say you can solve the unemployment problem tomorrow, but you're still going to have crime in this country. You must even equip the police tomorrow. But what you must do is you must have a, a holistic approach. I don't have that holistic approach because that is not my main domain. But it's very interesting what the honorable said. Mm. That they gave the what? Is it the police, the security people, Couples, yeah. two weeks to come up with a plan? Where were they all this time? Would we have this situation before they would say they'll come up with a plan? I want to believe they have a plan. They have a working plan. Okay? Certainly they're going to come up with a plan and they give them two weeks to deliver. No, I wouldn't want to believe that. When they go to work, what did they do? 
the police have a plan. They have addressed these issues. This park in in the robbery is not what is going to uh, what get us all waking up. Minister said that we're going to make what CCTV is available. No, the, the, the honorable will come in. Okay, because I think you want to clarify this. I think the police always have a plan to make it safe. Probably they don't have enough resources. Also, we, do, we didn't know that the situation you just described. One gun for, I mean, we don't know four that. One gun to four or five Very good. Then we have been buying vehicles for them. Why not we buy guns for them? Yeah. Is guns so expensive? So you see, those things for me have always been part of their system. They have a whole research department. So what is the totality of the elephant? They must know by now. We don't know. We are yeah. ordinary citizens. Okay. And if they know, let them face it. Right. Let them face the problem, get the information they need, plan and act. Well, the Honorable gave them two weeks. We are waiting. Mm. So all this time, they don't have a plan? We are indeed waiting. I, I, I get you, Mr. John Poku. I, I know you want to make a point. Don't forget that point. But um, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, your uh, messages uh, coming to us uh, this morning. Uh, this one from Ayurame at, uh, at Denta News Site says, Good morning to you and your panelists. We wish the authorities can protect us. People are very scared now. And Aaron again says, this under-resource of the police is being overblown. Okay, maybe you, uh, you, 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 you tend to agree with Professor Jidunun. All other departments are under-resourced. Were they chasing robbers and their car broke down on the way? Let's learn to use the little we have for the help of the citizens. And then Babs in Wa says, Ghana, uh, we must give praise to God for uh, the robbery cases we experienced so that we can overcome the challenge in the short term. But comparing Ghana to uh, the Global Insecurity Index, we are better because yesterday in Burkina Faso, gunmen killed people in broad daylight and in Nigeria. Uh, several girls were abducted by Boko Haram. So in all, Ghana is not so immune against global insecurity. So let's praise the security forces for doing well and ask for improvement where the president is willing to equip the security to do a good job. And then Musa Abatwa in Kumasi says, it's absolutely lazy and shambolic for somebody to suggest that uh, the unprecedented level of insecurity we are witnessing today is as a result of political motivation. The security apparatus must critically examine their intelligence setup and work to curtail this menace. Mr. Kofi Kumsun, come for your stone, you add. And then uh, this one from uh, Sadat in Sawan Zongo says, Good morning, Winston. Um, you're looking good, thank you, Sadat. Anyway, I don't like to be doing comparison, but sometimes uh, it's really painful to hear the NDC communicators talking about security in this country. Um, you remember. Uh, Nabak on his daughter's brother who publicly said he knows how to kill and he w kills every day. An MP was killed under what? NDC's uh, watch. Renato's house was attacked by thugs near the police station. An MC was also killed under the same NDC. What did the security do? Okay. Uh, Mustafa from um, Tamale Polytechnic uh, says, I hope uh, these armed robbery cases are not politically motivated. Well, and A.U. Farouk Tamale says, good morning uh, to you and your able panelists. No wonder Kofi Kumsun said he cannot sleep with his two eyes closed when an idol becomes the president. Today, what are we seeing and hearing? Insecurity and incompetence everywhere. Aaron from uh, Latavia Koshi says, good morning. Now, if we are able to keep our surroundings and uh, subject, uh, what, um, uh, subject ourselves to personal hygiene seriously, Lassa fever will not spread. The general public need enough information and knowledge on Lassa fever. And the general public needs to know the dangers and effects of Lassa fever. Thank you very much, um, Aaron, for this one. Now, uh, Yemoyim Lashibi says, when we live in a society where opulence and wealth cannot be traced to hard work, but corruption, cyber crime, and fraud, is direct, it directly leads to crime, which catapults to armed robbery. Three key elements is underpinning robbery, drugs, armed robbery, unemployment. Okay. And this one's uh, from... Um, Amuzu Oscar Solo from Georgia in the Volta region says, I felt very sad when I overheard this Lassa fever death was recorded in Ghana. I want to suggest to the Ghana Health Service to do serious monitoring alongside our borders, especially the Aflao side. Okay, thank you very much, Amuzu. And um, Mystic Inside uh, and Samama Dwejri says, Greetings to you and your panelists. The IGP himself must also be changed. What have we done mm -hmm. wrong in this state of fear? Um, they should stop the long talk and protect life and properties. And seriously, the security minister, interior minister, security advisor, and all security heads must also be changed. The president uh, is out there touring the whole world unnecessarily uh, while we are not safe in our country. I see the president to be a tourist than a president. There are lots of the messages, uh, but um, this one from Teacher Kofi in Shama says, the government must support the police service with necessary logistics to combat crime in this country because some of us are afraid. Um, 
and this one says, uh, good morning, Winston. Uh, robbers know that the police leadership is weak. Therefore, the IGP must retire. I don't know why the <laughs> president extended uh, you know, his tenure. Um, this one from Big Mama says, good morning. We're in Ghana here when a prominent MPP member on interview supported the, the, their party vigilantes without any question. The police said they are under resource, so crime is on the high. Hmm. What is the police doing with the guns that were seized at Kumasi in 2016? Or has it been displayed at the museum? Well, when the police see these guns, they always burn them. We, we know uh, that very well. Uh, Salif Mohammed says, good morning to you and your panelists. I don't know why crimes have dominated in this NPP administration. When you check in the year 2000 to 2008, it was disaster. It took a Tamil's government to fight it, even though it was, uh, there was crime, but it was better. I can also tell, without interference, in 2016, Robbers uh, came to my village, but it was uh, nighttime. In 2017, uh, June said robbers came there in the morning at 11.30, attacked GN Bank and walked free. And to the animal side, during NPP time, we were not sleeping just because of what? Thieves. But when the NDC came to power, we were no longer putting our animals in the house. Okay. Um, final one before we go for a short break. This one from uh, Osman uh, Bukrusan in Tamale says, Good morning, Wednesday. Now, the NPP and Nanados formed invisible forces to head previous government, and they were promised as well. And now they refused to go back to the... They refused to go by their words, and you think they won't head back, God save our mother, Ghana. Anyway, we'll go for a short break. When we return, I get, uh, you know, uh, Mr. John Poku to uh, come in. Then I get to Honorable uh, Collins Usamanka. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. All right, so welcome back from that short break. This is New Day Saturday edition uh, with me, Winston. We're also live on 3FM 92.7. So, yes, Mr. John Poku, we're still talking about the security issues. Yes, you wanted to make a quick comment. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, talking about the guns that were not fired, mm -hmm. it, com <laughs> it comes down to even the way the police and police are kept. Mm. Uh, you discover that the concept of family management wasn't, I would say, part of the key components of policing, I mean, police administration in the country. Um, where Amrisa are located, uh, located in police stations, you realize that even the very criminals who are in the cells, they see police officers every day going for weapons. And I'm saying this because if the criminal knows, who else are you hiding it from? <laughs> police officers go in for their weapons for duty. They come back, they <coughs> clear it, hand it over, another batch comes. It's happening right in front of the, of the because the cell is always behind the counter mm. and the armory is somewhere in front right now you enter the armory and you see the way it's built ventilation is a problem and that is where these ammunitions are so the heat that the 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 uh, quote unquote protects the ammunition is enough to work against its efficiency the less uh, uh, let's not even talk about the last time the police were allocated with weapons. I mean, that's an overflow. You have a, an MP here who is in a better position to tell us officially. <laughs> but these are important. But you know, you could just say it. No, I don't need to. We're keeping lots of information to ourselves. But, but yeah. the, yes. This is why I'm, uh, I'm saying that much of the work should be behind the scenes. You bring new weapons. You keep them in places that would not enable this weapon to function over a long period of time. So come back to the same The military seem to do it right, don't mm -hmm. they? The mm -hmm. military seem to do it mm -hmm. right. So why can't the police, for instance, mm -hmm. get that from the military? Yeah, because they see it as part of their life, basically. It's part and parcel of their work. Policing this crime, combative type of dealing with crime, is important, but policing goes beyond that. And that's why I was stressing on the investigation, investigation, investigation. Using information to deal with these things. Okay. Honorable Usama Mkwa. So we're back to you now. And uh, <laughs> it's very important because, you know, for you, uh, we have sent you there to do a job for us. We have sent you there to go and protect our interests. Sure. Uh, you've heard of, you know, the measures that have been put in place. You met the police also. And, you know, Professor Jidunu made a point, more like a question. He said, you've given the police two weeks to come up with a plan? What have they been doing no, no, all no, this while? No, 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 no. Maybe you, did not, you didn't hear me well. Uh, what I was saying 
uh, is that uh, as a committee, uh, even though we've given them two weeks ultimatum, what we are expecting that we want to see some reduction as far as the spate of army robbery is concerned. So we are monitoring. But the two weeks that you give them, you give it to them to do what? No. Please have their own plans. Mm -hmm. Of course, they came with action plans, uh, which we also made some recommendations, including establishing um, uh, intelligence gathering directorates. You know, they have a police intelligence directorate, but they don't have intelligence uh, uh, gathering directorates so that the public can also, I mean, offer their input. But what is CID um, doing? No, the CID... They, they are uh, investigating crimes. Exactly. They are, they, they are they getting data. Doing they so investigate. But what we are saying mm -hmm. is, is a shared... I mean, but the, I mean, so, so then what is the police uh, intelligence and professional no, so that, standards they're doing? Well, no, do we... we the no. Tips, mm. Do they deal with misconduct of police officers? Mm. So, you want, so you want the police to set up an intelligence gathering unit? Exactly. So you want that another structure? But so that director of intelligence, what is it doing? No, the police have... <laughs> Oh, police intelligent yes. directory. Mm -hmm. mm. But what we are saying is, or we are suggesting the issue, it must be in a broader I mean, uh, uh, platform so that the public will feel that this one is an establishment that we, we can make go, to. Uh, go to or also make our own input. Mm. Mm. Yes. So, you know, if the difference is clear. Yes. Um, uh, intelligence guardians directory as compared to that of police intelligence uh, directorate. Mm. Okay. Yes. So we know that um, security is a shared, I mean, uh, responsibility. Uh, therefore, public must also be key and conscious about it. Uh, we live in a country where people negotiate with their salaries and wages, but you don't see them negotiating mm -hmm. with their security. Security is very, I mean, uh, expensive. And therefore, much as we are confronted with logistical constraints, as I've already retreated, the point is that we must also, we must, we as people, we as citizens, must also make sure that we are secured. We are secured in terms of what? In terms of how we also conduct ourselves. Um, perception. Public perception about police um, as an institution is not flattering. Uh, we are hostile sometimes, even though police, which is the uh, main law enforcement agency that is there to pro 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 protect life and properties, police is there to maintain law and order. They are there to prevent and detect crimes. Sometimes our attitude, we see them, some even view them as enemies, which is supposed not be the case because they are there for our own good. Okay. And therefore, we should also collaborate with them. So those plans that they came to Parliament with, without talking about what the plans are, you've told us that some of those plans are the things that the information minister said. Now, as a committee, when they presented those plans to you, were you convinced that these are the plans, or these were the plans, that would take Ghana there to a state of enhanced security? Well, um, I cannot say that um, we were wholly convinced, mm. but uh, to some extent we were convinced in that uh, we as a committee also preferred, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, some If you're not wholly convinced, that's serious. No, it's serious yeah, because, it's serious because, no, it's serious because, no, it's serious because, it's serious because crime mm -hmm. is becoming more sophisticated mm -hmm. in recent times. And you and I know that research has also shown that it keeps on changing in terms of its quantitative and qualitative terms. So police must also devise new strategies in terms of combating it. And therefore, I'm expecting that the institution must be more innovative. Innovative in the sense that um, when you visit or you go to some advanced countries, how they've been able to combat crime, um, 
certain device must be employed. Um, talking about even uh, biometric identification management system, which a country like Canada, France, uh, uh, United States of America use, use that device to track all illicit guns in their system. And if we are sitting down without being more innovative here, then you and I know that these are the criminals. I also, I mean, developing in how they carry out their, their activity. And therefore, we must also approach them with two faces. Two faces as in, and here let me commend Ghana Police Service. You know, they've been able to, to establish cyber crimes unit. Yeah. Yes, and also uh, uh, financial uh, forensic For, yeah. uh, uh, unit at the CID headquarters to deal with, I mean, procurement, fraud, and other uh, economic crime uh, 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 issues. Now, the point is, now that police uh, have developed um, software, I don't want to talk about it, to track the activities of these Sakawa boys, it's also possible that now that they, they, they feel uncomfortable with the activity. It's possible that they, they, they will step out eh, and re-engage <laughs> in other aspect of commission of such crime. Okay. Yes. So, if I say I wasn't wholly convinced, my justification was the point that I made before the IGP that going forward, we need to be more innovative with the introduction of these uh, uh, beams, as I, 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 I you know, I, my, I, 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 as, as much as I would want to find out more about these things, I'm also constrained by the fact that some of these things are security issues, mm -hmm. and so you don't want to give so much information. But uh, whenever the police has said, you know, they are watching, they are watching. Uh, us. That's why I'm saying I'm constrained <laughs> by that. That's why I'm saying that I'm. Con I mean, the civic responsibility of me being a journalist also tells me that. Uh, we could shelve some of the questions, even though naturally I would have loved to ask, but we'll, we'll, we'll put those ones there. But any time the police has said, uh, because you've been engaging with them and you are a representative, you know, we've sent you to do a job for us. Uh, you know, any time the police has said, we're going to do this. For instance, we're declaring a war on land guards because they are land guards by the day robbers at night. They're supposed to be arresting them. And, uh, and naturally, if you say they are land guards by day and robbers at night and you're arresting them, that naturally should be leading to a reduction in robbery cases, unfortunately. It's rather leading to uh, an, an increase, and in, in, in this case, you know. No, uh, no, no. Yeah, um, well, uh, I disagree with you to some extent. Uh, the, the statistics available suggest otherwise that crime has already, um, uh, crime has gone down compared to that of the previous years. What are the figures? The figures has been submitted by the National Security uh, Ministry of Interior, even Ministry of uh, 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 Defense, through their performance-based report, clearly suggested that uh, if you compare crime rate of 2015-2016 baseline to that of 2017, now we, I think the year is also too, too, too young to conclude mm -hmm. that we are we are uh, in the month of uh, February. Yes, mm -hmm. but it deals with the annual statistics. Mm -hmm. So the analysis are there. And that was the reason why I said that um, we are safe. Even though there is an, uh, an erroneous impression that has been created as if we are in the state of insecurity. But from where I sit... But it's not an erroneous impression, and, is it? I mean, what you and, see is how you feel. <laughs> you've seen it, and so you begin to feel. I mean, you've seen it happening in No, that's a perception. It's a perception. <laughs> it's not a perception. No, this is happening. It's a, it's, a, it's a perception. We've it's seen it happening. There's a conscious effort you see, the thing about of, of, the, of creating that sense of insecurity. No, but, no, but you see, the thing about... By, 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 the thing by about open media... And not, no, no, no. Let's not go <laughs> there yet. It says security I, has no color. It, no, that's not the other I will get to that. I'll get to that point. But you see, the thing about the media and the... Uh, you know, uh, social media now. Is that a lot of these things, fortunately or unfortunately, 
when they happen, people even before uh, you know calling the police will pick their phones to film it and share. And so you see them as they happen. Okay, not long ago, we're told. I mean, the uh, Ghana Forest Bureau uh, Association told us how there's been 20 robbery cases at Forest January, Bureau, February. January, February alone. It had become. And at the time they were speaking, that was at the end of February. I mean, it had also become an issue for mobile money, uh, you know, merchants. Yeah. She had complained. Yes. So clearly, clearly, this is not a perception. This is reality confronting you. No, but for you to describe Ghana as a failed state, as mm -hmm. as a nobody said that. No, no, that is that is what our opponents are doing. And you, you and this I, has no color. So we let's not go into the coloring of it. Good, <laughs> but that is also creating that. Uh, impression wouldn't you have done the same if you were in opposition that what that they're gonna become a field state if you had seen all these things happen no 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 oh, even though we criticized them ours was constructive <laughs> that's from you let's move ahead let's move ahead, move ahead. <laughs> let's move ahead i mean you you, you think this is uh, politically motivated well uh, talking about that <laughs> why you want to reaco what a former president is that what is that the line you want to go <laughs> is that where you want to go <laughs> well me, you can also Rule it out, of course. You can't no, for me, yes, it's, yes, it's, it's possible. Bobby, finally on this. I mean, Mr. Rollins. It's, it's, that's, he said, let us hope mm. that it is not politically motivated. Mm. That statement alone was suggesting that that he doesn't want to believe. may have crossed mm -hmm. his mind. Yeah, here goes that statement. Let us hope the recent <laughs> robbery and killings <laughs> is downright plain robbery and not a moti politically motivated action. You see, from my, problem, my problem with that, that statement was. coming from the former president. Once you suggest that it is politically motivated, then you are coloring it. Then you are saying that it is a possibility that the political party that is not in government would have people. Is that from within or without? Yeah, from within Ghana or without Ghana. Mm, no, from within or uh, the, uh, the you government mean within or, the the government the or not. outside the party. But why, which, I mean, I don't think Ghanaians by nature are that dubious who hire people to kill other people just to make a political statement. Who benefits? Is it, this have a you forgotten the this, contract killing? This is a, this is a politician no, no, speaking. No, 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 that is contract yeah. killing yeah. is not robbury. No, you are talking about the Ghanaian. Ghanaian. That, that has mean, happened. No, no, okay, well, so well, maybe well, I should put it in a context. The, the, the contract, no, no, but, but hold on. What we, what we define as contract killing was a politician putting a term to killings that have happened in the country. Yeah. Uh, the, the police did not come out to tell you that uh, it was people being contracted to kill. Well, it, it took a political twist and we said, these are contract killings. But I would say, let's take... Let's not overrule what the former president said. No. No, the moment uh, we start there are entertaining that... Oh, oh, hold on, Mr. Uh, yes. My problem right, is yes. that the moment we start entertaining, even entertaining that line of thought, mm. we lose focus. No. Because this is robbery. Robbery as defined by the law is using arms to steal. Did they take something? Yes. It is different from somebody walking to the former MP's house. May he so rest in peace. Yes. Not taking the money, money, anything. Just killing him and walking away. That is different. This one, the, what happened in Tema? A cashier was trailed on the 28th of February. The day he would take money and go and pay workers. He is killed, the money is taken. Royal Motors, money is taken. Somebody walks from the bank. Money is taken. How can that be politically motivated? What political statement will come out of this? If it was a polit if they didn't take a material something, then you can say that there is other motive other than money. But money has been taken. Assets have been taken. For me, it's very unfortunate because once you start suggesting that, you now divide attention. Already we are saying they, are, they don't have capacity. So now they must concentrate or divide their resources but, but to Bobby, investigating uh, Bobby, whether it's politically Bobby, Bobby, possible uh, this is, or not. Th this is somebody, this is somebody. This is somebody okay. who's uh, a former president. He's been within the military. I mean, one of the persons who has who's had uh, the most successful military regimes in this country. <laughs> when I say most successful, by length. Let me just clarify that. You know, the length of his military regime. 11 years of military rule. Yeah, and he has also and so is it considerable number I mean, of years shouldn't you be taking him seriously when he talks about states. some of these things mm -hmm. saying i only hope maybe he knows something we do not then know then he should tell us what he knows with all due respect and so so he, he should be tell us admonition then you are to here. You. no it's to, to all of us that but he says <laughs> it's not from within or without <laughs> well so it doesn't exonerate you also it doesn't mean your opponents are doing that well it's possible so that's the reason why we want to get rid of 
these are main uh, challenges that we face. But uh, let me let me draw our minds to what is happening in the regional block, mm -hmm. Africa. Finally, finally, we are confronted with security threats, which include um, cross-border crime, violent extremism, uh, human trafficking, drug trafficking, piracy, maritime insecurity, and no country is immune to threat. Just yesterday, look at what happened in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. So what is happening within this country is also a wake-up call to work harder so that our citizens are being protected. And I can assure you that Ghana, under the watch of the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Air Force, <laughs> President mm -hmm. Nana Ekufuado, we are safe. Mm -hmm. I, I leave it at that. Um, Mr. Poku, yes, uh, on uh, the comments by Mr. Roland and I get Professor Jitunu, and we wrap it up on the security mm -hmm. issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean. No, I think if you read what is uh, on the screen there, mm -hmm. I think the emphasis on, is on undermining the guys in charge. Mm -hmm. And for that, it leaves several rooms or several options. It could be that even within the party, there are people who feel uh, sidelined. It means that person. we are interpreting the within and without, not to mean Ghana, but the that is also party. another level. Okay, it can be within the because party. Because when he says, can let us hope, hold party. on. So let us hope the recent robbery and killings is uh, done right, uh, rob robbery, and not a politically mm -hmm. motivated action mm -hmm. from within or without calculated to undermine those in charge of the security machinery in order to pave way uh, mm -hmm. for certain parochial ambitions. Exactly. So when you say politically, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to pave way mm -hmm. for parochial ambitions, mm -hmm. where's that me talking about Ghana? Well, <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> we're, we're talking Not about necessarily. Uh, like I was saying, it could be within the party, mm -hmm. it could be outside the party. No, but I said we're only talking about Ghana. And not no, outside. the without opens the, 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 the scope beyond mm -hmm. Ghana. Within and without. Uh, yes. Political is Ghana. Go ahead. Within can be within the party, mm -hmm. within the country. And also without can be okay. uh, outside the country. So we, we, is, he has not said that the MPP is a security stand party and the rest are all ganging against mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Inside the party, there could be a group that is not interested in what is happening and they will do whatever they want. Politics can be dangerous. So <laughs> <laughs> you need to <laughs> think about it. What, 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 is here. what do you mean by politics can be dangerous? Your job could be dangerous sometimes. Sure, sure, sure. You do, you, a man, you, do a man, you do a manner of things. Yes, yes. yes. Any, anything that wins an election. What? Anything that wins an election ha has to be done at some point. Anything what? That wins an, that wins that an election. That advantage. That's what it is. <laughs> of course it is. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it at that. We will continue on that. <laughs> Professor Chidonu, uh, listening to Mr. Rollins, what do you make of that? Before we move to uh, issues of uh, corruption and, uh, you know, Neil and Tevan, Napo and Anubri Bwain. Yes. Go on. <laughs> you see, I don't know why you guys bother too much when Rollins says something. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't bother. No, you should bother. But you see, you don't go interpreting Rollins. The only person who can interpret Rollins <laughs> is Rollins. Mm. Rollins have always been talking like this from day one. Mm. He has not changed. He's so passionate about a lot of things. So sometimes when you try to put a twist to what he said, you may go get it wrong. You just go back and ask a former uh, president, what do you mean by this? Mm. And he's a man who will volunteer an answer. Right now we're speculating what Rollins say. Mm -hmm. Rollins always talk like this. Okay, did you hear President, former President Kufo making any statement? I didn't hear he said anything. <laughs> no, I haven't. It's, it's Rollins who <laughs> says something <laughs> about this. Thing. Okay, now when he said it, and when you just say, well, this is what Rollins said, this is what he meant, no, no, you may be wrong. You go back and ask him again. So, Mr. Your Excellency, you say so, so, and so, within and without, Parochia, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Rollins will volunteer again and answer. We don't know that. Now, since yeah, he said that, since, since, yeah, since he said that, he didn't say anything. Yeah. Then we all think that this is what he meant. Oh, no, I don't think you no, should but, be careful you know, about but, that. I mean, coming from a professor <laughs> who's done a lot of research, <laughs> who probably would have fixed somebody's statement and begin to do analysis. No, 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 that's a tough one. <laughs> Rollins, Rollins, is Rollins. Rollins. No, no, no. Rollins, mm -hmm. Rollins, you want to comment on anything? 
is very passionate what he, what he said, but don't say, don't, don't always interpret what, what he said, mm -hmm. what he meant. Mm -hmm. You must go back and ask him. Look, listen to what he said. He's the only one who said it that way. Mm -hmm. Only one is. So you got to go back and ask him. Mm -hmm. Don't do any PAD or analysis on it. You'll get it wrong. <laughs> That's the first point. Now, I think, mm -hmm. as he insists, that this is a, an elephant issue. It has facetted aspects. What caused it and how we prevent it? Resourcing police, the criminals. I'm very, it's very interesting what the Honorable said, that the police must be innovative because the criminals are becoming what? More and more innovative. I also want to think that for the police, it's work in progress. Okay? The criminals on top are ahead of how they say. Mm -hmm. I want to also say these are not petty criminals. Mm -hmm. These are professionals. Yes. These are professionals. They didn't even woke up mm -hmm. yesterday to go and attack this bank. They plan it. Nunu Mensah, the former security advisor to a whole government, a former chief of defense staff. Is that the same guy we're talking about? Yeah, same guy. He right. said this guy mean business. These guys are no, serious he people. Uh, Is he not the same guy? Yeah, he was, was uh, coordinator. He was one time CDS and uh, General Akufu. That was oh. in the military regime. Yeah, I, I want to know whether it's the same guy we're talking about. the same about. guy we're talking about. Very that's, good. That's Isn't Mensah. General Nunu Mensah? Yes, Brigadier General Nunu Mensah. Very good. He has been alone for a long time. Mm. Is that correct? He knows right. more about security than you and I. And he said, these are not petty criminals. These are organized people. Sure. They stay low. They see what is going on. They were driving a Land Cruiser. Very good. You see, so they this... And the police them. also know these things. Let's not assume that our they police know. don't know these things. The world have been doing all these times. They have their intelligence. They know, them, they know these people. It's what we ordinary people when this thing happens. Hey, what is hell is going on? The police know that, hey, we know these things. We know this. We know the trend. We know how this. So I would want to see that the, the police are on top of this. The honorable and the other guys might assure us, and they keep assuring us the list of things that, uh, what is the name? The, the, the Minister for Information list that. Well, uh, bring a helicopter, bring a street light. I would have preferred he put some timeline on that. Mm. The only ordinary edition, the honorable put a timeline. He said in two weeks. So we are watching this space. He said in two weeks, they yes. must deliver. It's not deliver a plan. They must break the, the crime down. Yes. Let, let's be clear on that. Yes. It's not to deliver a plan to bring the crime down no, in they two have, weeks. They, they, they have a long term plan. They have, I mean, medium term. Yeah, I just want to be clear. I want to be clear. Interested in the short, short term. term. Okay. Short term. So you, so you, two weeks. you don't yes. want two weeks. By the time weeks. they come back two weeks, there should have been a, 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 a no, we, Yes, so we are also monitoring. Yes. Very so, good. So that's clear. This crime. If it comes down in two weeks time, we probably think that is a government action. <laughs> or maybe that the criminals have lied low. Okay. We don't know. But the point I'm making <laughs> well, is that this is a long-term thing. This is a work in progress. I don't know whether bringing street lights in the villages will have solved it. It's good to have street lights. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? It would is. It, well, which, which, which other one? The, the other one CCTV. is what? The CCTV. I'll be around for a long time. It's solving crime in a lot of, preventing crime in a lot of other places. It's only new. And then I would have preferred the minister give us some timeline. When will he do this? You could have done this in another four years, in another five years. We want some timelines. If you can come back again and tell her, look, what I said, would the plan that the government have in place, a plan, of course. What are the timelines? When do you think that the street will, be, will have the light? The CCTV, the central command system, when will it be there? We want some timelines. And also, but now we have one timeline we're looking at. Two, two weeks' times. <laughs> okay, these people have given a what? A matching orders that in two weeks' time, this crime should come down. That will be the short term. But in the long term, we see whether, how we can. But I think it's a work in progress for the police. The crime is becoming more sophisticated. These are not petty cr uh, criminals. These are professionals. Well, these are not petty criminals. Uh, these are professionals. So uh, this is a new Saturday edition on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7. We need to move on, uh, you know, and moving on to issues of corruption. Now, uh, I mean, last week, also, uh, yes, last week uh, during the unity walk of the NDC, following the uh, conviction of Abu Gapile. You heard from uh, Neil Ante Van der Poy. Well, he said in between 2001 and 2004, similar things happened. Some of their members were jailed. It didn't deter the NDC. It didn't prevent them from winning election 2008. And he believes that, uh, you know, uh, God willing, 2020, the NDC would win the elections and get Abu Gapile out. Well, <laughs> that generated lots of controversy. His own party came out with a statement uh, distancing itself from everything that Neil Ante Van der Poy said. And later on, the party moved in and said, you know what, everything that Neil Antil Van der Poy said, it was his own opinion. Uh, we had asked him to apologize, and he refused. Well, that did not end there, because the Deputy General Secretary of the NPP, Nanu Bribwine, <laughs> also got into the news. And this time around, well, he says, the government gave them 50 billion. I do not know whether that is 
old currency or new currency. But looking at the fact that the country's revenue projections for 2017 mm -hmm. was not even up to 40 billion Ghana cities, it certainly would be old currency for 50 billion. So that becomes 5 million Ghana cities. This coupled with the NDC's press conference on corruption, and I, and I get to you, Honorable Ousa mm -hmm. <laughs> Listening to the NDC, yes, they also had a press conference on uh, the CPI, the fact that it's an NPP problem. The fact that, you know, uh, of the nine variables, I mean, that contributed towards uh, the decision, reaching the 40 <coughs> score, seven were conducted in 2017. And so they c it, it can't be blamed on them. Listening to Anu Bribwine, for instance, no. uh, saying <laughs> that the Flagstaff House gave 50 billion. Do you believe that? Do I believe what? <laughs> what? Uh, is, he is your party's deputy general secretary. And he has come out publicly. To say that he was telling you that he lied, he lied to solicit. That could only be an afterthought. Information. Afterthought. That could be. So we should uh, take it and leave it there. Why should we take it and leave it there? <laughs> but the man has come out. No, we need to investigate. Should we investigate we? 50 billion? Did the flag staff has contribute? Are you aware of that? Even the, the total budget for 2018. No, I am saying eh? that I am saying that because we know that <laughs> it's a little over sixty billion. Yes, no, I'm saying because we know that our total revenue uh, projection is not fifty billion, it means old Ghana cities fifty billion, five million Ghana cities. I think Obibuai has been humbled enough <laughs> to eat his humble pie. So why <laughs> why do you want me to as it to uh, fuel? I mean this issue. No, but I'm just curious. Horse. No, 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 but I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious. When you are going for Congress as a party, you're going for a conference as a party, how do you fund the members, the delegates from your constituencies? You are an MP, so these no, are but you know, you know, well, as a member of parliament, mm -hmm. um, I must say that uh, my salary uh, is being deducted mm -hmm. at source. And these are some of the things we use to work on our party. I mean, activity. Mm. So, uh, uh, for anybody to suggest that uh, we're going for a conference and therefore uh, we've gone to siphon, I mean, uh, cash from state coffers, it's not that here nor there. That is not true. What I know is that the money is deducted from our salaries. Oh, it's still being deducted? Sure, sure. Even when we are in government. How much is deducted monthly? Monthly? Why do you want me to disclose it? To be on Ethica, to do that. Or oh, sometimes that's from the sometimes ago used to pay from the thousand cities. It's it's the the cocos cocos that deduct it. Mm. Sometimes ago used to pay thousand cities. I know that. So <laughs> you, you sometimes you know. you sometimes ago. I don't know if it's changed. So, so if you know, uh, yeah, I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> no, some, no, years ago, no years ago. No years ago was years ago. No, years, years ago was thousand cities. I don't know whether it's gone down or it's increased. I know what's happening. Has it gone down or it's increased? It has been increased. It has been increased. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. You know, so, so at least uh, uh, sometime ago, yes, I knew that figure. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, I think uh, Nana Obibuahim made a lot of wild allegations mm -hmm. uh, with his private conversation with uh, a known NDC activist, <laughs> uh, Juan Kweku Skett, mm -hmm. who resides in I mean, uh, uh, United States of America. Uh, it was a private matter, even though one was not honest. Uh, it was leaked. Uh, Nana came out to apologize that he aired. Mm -hmm. But talking about he aired, mm -hmm. Osama, the things Nana Obi Bwahin says in there, isn't it these things which fuel corruption? Because all of a sudden, he thinks that once his party is in office, he's entitled to this, that, and that. Nobody's even called me and said, this is a contract Come for Come and take it. <laughs> and that he went to Cape Coast, he was getting 3,000 and 2,000, 5,000 5, in total. So all of a sudden, isn't this what you politicians think of in wanting to get into politics? And isn't these... No, uh, this, this, this is a general statement that you are making. Narrow it to Nana Obi so that he said that, he can, said no, he, no, no but I am asking point. that question because we're talking about corruption now. And I've heard Mama Yariga make the point. And I spoke with him uh, in uh, the studios of 3FM where he said that, look, the sole sourcing in our procurement laws for it's political patronage. Because if you, and he says, if yes, yes. To some extent. Ah, great, you see, you're admitting. <laughs> to some extent for political <laughs> patronage. Know, course, yeah, yeah. And so clearly, the sort of thing that Nobri Bohini says 
as part of a problem that we have in this country. So people think that because I played a certain role, once you are in office, give me this. And that naturally leads to corruption. Sure. Yes. Um, you know, corruption poses threats mm -hmm. to our national life mm -hmm. and therefore must not be given any space to operate. Uh, I'm sure as government, we are doing our best to fight corruption. Here we are, a senior member of our party, um, who has alleged that he lied to solicit an authentic <laughs> information. <laughs> that he, I mean, that he, says, that he says he lied. It doesn't mean that you just threw out everything he said. No, so I don't know. The man has come out. <laughs> and well, he has admitted it. I wonder why you want us to... Um, <laughs> um, uh, I mean, throw more light on this particular <laughs> issue. Let's put it aside. Mm. <laughs> well, we, we, we will not put it aside. I mean, we need to come back and uh, talk about this. I'll get to Bobby and Professor Jidono as well as uh, uh, John Pogu. This is a uh, new Desert edition. We go for a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, so welcome back uh, from that short break. And join us with your thoughts, 0500 60 70 70. But Bobby, so uh, Honorable is beginning, you know, has been trying to tell us that, oh, the man himself has, you know, denied these things. But if we're talking about corruption and the fight against corruption, mm -hmm. how can you take a government that says, I'm fighting corruption serious, when its own Deputy General Secretary is alleging that they've been transferring monies from the Flagstaff House to it's, uh, you know, uh, the party. Wait, can I tie in, when your introduction, you made reference to Neil and Yes, you can, can tie I them, tie? yes. Okay, so everybody, every well-meaning Ghanaian would condemn outrightly what Neil and Tevan said. That is, again, a blatant attack on the judiciary. The judiciary has gone through its procedure, found somebody guilty. The lawyers are appealing. They filed notices of appeal. And you come and say in 2020, when you win elections, Without recourse to judicial process, you are going to free the person. But they it's, can, can't they? No. The president has those powers. Yes, the president yes. has those powers, but you have said it in such a way that it is for political expediency. And that way you are undermining the very essence of, you know, the justice delivery system. What it means is that if the ordinary man on the street does not know any politician or is not politically worth anything, he is going to remain in jail. So that, that statement should be condemned from the beginning. And it's surprising that he's not yet come out to apologize, like some of them do that. Oh, maybe on the platform, when you mount the political no, platform, he, he, you see he, a lot he, of things. He did not mount a political platform. He actually said that on the sideline, I mean, on the sides of the program. So if he had mounted a political then it platform, have been different. then you could have said it was Beshi. Was <laughs> yes, Beshi. But this one, it, this, one was, this, was one, this was not a case of mounting a political platform. Uh, my producers on radio spoke with him. He said uh, he had been taken out of context, except that he didn't explain what he what meant, he meant by, by out of being taken out of context. And he said he wasn't going to speak about it. So he's not spoken about it. Well, it's, it's quite unfortunate. Um, we, 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 we see what posterity would do for that. Mm -hmm. Now come to Nano Bibwa. Sure. You see, it's unfortunate in so many ways. I'm not looking at this as an MPP problem. I'm looking at this as a national problem. Because like you said, the Corruption Perception Index when it comes, it is not when it it is published internationally. Yeah, it's not published locally. It's published internationally, and it's a survey undertaken by an internationally recognized institution. When it is published, they don't say MPP government no. or NDC government. They say Ghana, and when investors are coming in, they watch these things and see how we can corrupt officials. Whether the officials are, you know, we can manipulate them. It's no good for our image. So both MPP and NDC should stop playing games with this. It is wrong. Now, Nano Bibuahin's situation, I am surprised he's still at post. I think that if the MPP wants us to take them serious on their fight against corruption in this contest, I hear he's been referred to the steering committee. He should be suspended pending the investigation. Not so, not natural justice. He must go through. No, no, no. Process. That is what I'm saying. Yeah, so he's not going through. The, the man process. has not denied what he said. He said he lied. He said he lied to somebody mm -hmm. to, so, to get information. Exactly. Was that conversation to that attempt to get information was it sanctioned by the MPP? It was a private. It was a private thing. And now what he has done has brought a lot of 
bad press to the MPP. If the MPP wants us to take them serious, he should be suspended pending the investigations because MPP has set that track record of suspending people that they think their activities or they are in league with certain persons from the opposition side. National Chairman, former General Secretary, we all hear that they were suspended because I think they are still on suspension. <laughs> the longest yeah. suspension in the history yeah, of, they of Ghana. They were suspended because so. their oh, activities more than recuperate. <laughs> <laughs> because but their but activities <laughs> were deemed to be inimical to the yes, interest of the party right. because they had certain unfavorable relationship with people from the other side. That is what we were being told from the from the from the bottom. Now somebody has made these allegations. We don't have to wait to go to elections for the person to be suspended. If the MPP wants us to take them serious, they should suspend this gentleman now. If they, they investigate and it comes out that what he said, he actually said it. It doesn't matter whether he intended to lie to the gentleman or not. That is a wrong exercise of discretion. And it has affected the party, not only him. You see, this gentleman in question is somebody who, over the period, has been made, making certain comments which are not right. When these vigilante issues came out, he passed certain damaging comments, saying that the people should go ahead, they will not be touched. Nobody questioned him. And that is where my problem is. Both political parties, they set out somebody as, how should I describe it, as the firebrand. And when there's an issue, they talk loosely. When it benefits the political party, that person is Are not recommended. Are you saying is a loose talker? No, I'm making a general comment. But he's it's a, a, gen, it's a but he's general firebrand comment. here, so he's no, a No, no, no. I said the political parties mm, but... sometimes set up people as firebrands. I'm not making reference to Nano Bribo okay. here. And they are allowed to talk loosely, damning all the consequences on the country. Okay. When it benefits that party for political expediency, they don't reprimand him, reprimand him. Now, when it goes bad, because, like I said, if you play with the dog, it will lick you one day. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Jidoro, you've been following, uh, you've heard from uh, Nano Bribohini and everything that he said. Uh, what do you make of this? And so far, when it comes to the handling of it, uh, even from a government point of view, what do you make of it? Well, I, I don't know why we should be bothered about it, to be frank with you. Uh -huh. It's a party matter. I don't know no, why. No, 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 but he, he brings in the flag staff. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the and, 50, and, and the 50 million yes, one. the flag staff has no, the 50, money, mil, no, the 50 yeah. billion one. He yes. has clarified that he's a lie. He, he made it How up. do we know he was lying? Well, well, I, I think it's if to figure that out. The government cannot <laughs> say that it's a lie. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't close a 50 million Ghana cities hole. Mm -hmm. You can't close that. You can't hide that. It's too big. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's no, no, no. That's let's, old let's, let's, no, 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 no. That's no. old currency. It's old currency. It's, 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 so that's five million. Five million is a lot of money. <laughs> is that correct? Mm -hmm. The yes. presidency is not the minister of uh, <laughs> minister of finance, mm -hmm. where the money goes through. Eh? The presidency have his own budget. If the fifty million come from the presidency, where did they get it from? That that money you can't hide it. Even if it's Ghana cities, it's uh, old Ghana cities, you can't hide it. Mm -hmm. When the government came on and said he's telling lies. If the government actually gave five million Ghana, uh, old, uh, new Ghana cities for this uh, party conference, eh? if they actually did that, eh? and these Obri guys talk about it, you think the government will not be crazy to come and say we didn't do it? Because you can't hide that. So I think this guy said it's a lie. I don't know where he told a lie. The government came and said, no, it's a lie. That one from the 50 million one, we can sensationalize it any way we want. But that is not the issue. For me, the issue is what he said. Mm. And that you cannot suspend him on that. He's speaking the truth. <laughs> you don't suspend people for speaking the truth. What is the truth? He said he has no car. They have not given him a car. They have not paid his salary. They don't pay him fuel. Everything he does by himself. And his acting general secretary also came and confirmed. No, that's not all he said. What did he say? He, he said it? that they are sharing contracts. Yes, yes, that one too. Yeah, that one too. It's true. It's true. Then I will qualify that. <laughs> it's true, we don't know that. Prof, prof is being selective here. Well, no, 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 no. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. No, no, no. You, 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 you let, me, let me land. Okay, let's put it on the table. You say uh, he has no car. Nobody bought him official car. Yes. Is that true? Yes. The deputy, uh, the acting general secretary came to confirm that. Yes. Who, 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 who should give you a car? Uh, salary. 
Who should give you salary? You're not uh, only the general employee. secretary and uh, what? National and, uh, organizer. Who, who is paid. Who paid. Even he himself, he has not been paid. So he confirms that. Eh? Nano Bree's point. Mm -hmm. He'll be confirming. Mm -hmm. uh, which one? The contract one. He defended that to say, what the hell is he talking about? That he, even him, the Attic General Secretary, didn't give me contract. He has no contract uh, at the flat hour to be given to anybody. Now, do ministers give a contract? That one, we all know. Politics is about expectations. The rank and file, we have talked on this platform a lot of time, where the rank and file of the MPP and NDC say that we have brought the government into power, they have not given anything. Expectations. Now, we didn't know that even the people in the hierarchy of the party also have these expectations, expectations. which is not fulfilled. <laughs> Uh, the rank and file to the country. Oh, so it's not only us. We thought uh, we are not uh, facilitated. Look, uh, all this. When people go into politics to bring about change, okay, not to enrich themselves, not to help themselves, but quite a number of people do enter. Lead the fact, enter into politics in our neighborhood, because they think that when they are in power, they will be able to get something. This guy said what a lot of people will not say, and he was not telling it to us. He didn't go on air and say that. I wasn't given contract. Mm. He told you to a guy, somebody, privately, is that correct? Private, uh, yes. yes, but you agree. You agree. Both the NDC, MPP, all their functionaries, these expectations are there. Remember this guy, Kennedy, mm -hmm. eh? Kennedy, the MP, mm -hmm. was saying that they were giving a contract to mm. NDC. Which mm -hmm. contract is he talking about? It's the same expectations. First, let's stop kidding ourselves. On the security issue, we are not sure about some few things. This one, we are pretty sure. We, 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 we are pretty we, sure. We are pretty sure, but we need to go for a short break. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we need to go for a short break. Uh, you know, our final break, so that we come back and uh, continue being pretty sure about, uh, you know, what an LB one has said and the truth or otherwise of that statement. Uh, we go for a short break. We'll be right back after this. All right, so welcome back from that short break. This is New Day Saturday edition. And we're talking about, you know, these comments by Nanobi Wine and Nilan Tivanda. So, uh, John Poku, uh, let's get to you and uh, what you make of all of this. Finally. Uh, well, in both cases, it sounds like a private affair because it involved political parties. But I'm just uh, reflecting on... Nilan Tivanda spoke to the media, actually. It was an interview. He knew he was no, going to an interview. No, it's the party that is in focus. Mm. Yeah, but be that as it may... These are two vehicles that recruit our leaders. Mm. And by extension, they are involved in the fight against corruption at the national level. Now, we cannot fight corruption without strong institutions. And so if an institution like a political party have their members erring, the question is, to what extent are they able to bring them to book? Um, you've seen on the NDC side, a statement dissociating itself from what he said. But the sad thing is convincing him to withdraw his refusing. I think that for me is a very sad mm. part of it. And they should be able to, if they really think that he should apologize, they, they should be able to get him to apologize. Mm. On the ND side, NDC, uh, NPP side too, I think the, the, the man has retracted his... Uh, well, he's only said he lied, but mm -hmm. I mean... What was the motivation in line? Yeah, but at the same time, we hear that it's going before the steering committee yes. of the party. I think I'm, I'm rather will be interested in what comes out of that process. But they should be showing by example that when their members mm. go out of mm. the way, the, the, the party is in a position to bring them back to, to book. And for me, that, that's what is interested to me. Thank you. We, we, we need to be wrapping up. Uh, finally, I start off with you, uh, you know, Honorable Ousama. Maybe you have something to say about Nana Ubi Bwahin's issue. Finally. <laughs> I think as for uh, Nana Ubi Bwahin's issue, uh, uh, we have dealt with. Prof says uh, all the things he said, <laughs> apart from the uh, 50 billion, are true. Well, that, that sounds weird because uh, if uh, we are denying the entire conversation, uh, then it must be so. But for us to be selecting <laughs> that true? some portion are true. Uh, no, is it not true? Uh, 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 I mean, is, is it not true? Everyone is being politically correct. Have you gotten any contract yourself? Being politically correct. Finally, yes. Finally, on our wrapping. Finally, on the uh, Ninlantis uh, 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 position, I think um, now here we are the same party giving us two different accounts. One suggesting that when we come back to power, we're going to release convicts. The general secretary has also come out that what 
Neil Ante is saying is not the position of the party. Meanwhile, he's a member of the party. Yeah, but that he's a member and of the party doesn't mean he's good for the party. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's why he's a member of allow. parliament. Uh, Don't forget. I know, but that's all time would allow us, unfortunately, to thank you very much, Honorable uh, Collins Ousam, a member of parliament for uh, Menshia North and Vice Chairman of the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament. Bobby Banson is a private legal practitioner. Professor uh, Clement Jidunu is uh, the president of the Accra Institute of uh, you know, um, technology. technology. Yeah. And John Poku is head of uh, you know, conflict management uh, program at the Kofi yes, Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. Bobby, Sorry, you before you sign off, today is the burial of the police officer. Who was yes, killed. today is the burial of the police officer who was killed in Pabena. Sure, uh, we wish his family our deepest condolences. My name is Winston Amwa. I stood in for your regular host, Abnat Tibi. Thank you very much uh, for joining us.